I'd like to do a review and a product test on the Everstart 750 watt inverter. Uh, this particular one is model number 70003M. And the reason I want to do a review of this and actual performance testing using um, instrumentation is I don't, I don't think this is even close to capable of putting out 750 continuous watts. Um, I don't say that because of what's in here. I say that for two reasons. Number one, these cables. Let's let's look at this. Okay, we're talking about 750 watts out of an inverter. Inverters, let's just say it's 80% efficient. That means from the battery, you've got to pull 900 and something watts at 12.6 nominal volts. I did the math on that. That means we're talking about 75 amps through these. I don't even know what this is. Um, 10 gauge? I mean, it's not going to happen, guys. So, um, I, the second reason being, I was just using this, and I've used it for small loads before. It's not capable of running a single window air conditioner, which is less than 750 watts, but that's probably because of the starting, volt, starting current. But I was using it to run this shop vac, and the shop vac barely started. Um, when I say barely, I mean when I flipped the switch, there was a little suction just for a split second, and then it stopped, and then it kind of ramped up to speed as the inverter recovered. Um, but as I was running it, just because I'm familiar with this VAC, I know that it wasn't running at top speed because of the sound. Um, so we're actually going to put some instrumentation on this. I've got this meter that will show us AC current and voltage. I suspect voltage is, is dropping. Um, and this has a readout on it that will show the DC voltage coming in. And while I was running this, the, the shop vac, this screen was showing like 10.6 volts. So I went and started the truck. And the truck is probably running 14 volts, 14 and a half. But this display was still showing just 10 something. So I'm certain, I'm certain that these cables that they've supplied with it are just not capable of producing what we need. And we're going to find out. So the way we're going to do this, I'm going to plug in this meter. It's going to be upside down, unfortunately, so the inverter will be sitting kind of funny like this. I'm going to plug in this meter. We're going to take a DC voltage measurement at our top posts. This is an almost new Optima Red Top, by the way. So this is an ideal test source. Um, we're going to take voltage at the top post of the battery. We're going to move a half an inch over. We're going to take a DC measurement at the clamp that's that's supplied with this. I suspect there's a voltage drop between here and here. And then we're going to come here. We're going to take a DC measurement from these posts. Oop, these posts. And then we're going to take a look at our meter to see what's actually coming out. And then we're going to start the truck and take all those measurements again. Hopefully each pass will be about as long as I just took to explain it and we'll get through this pretty quickly. So let's give it a try. I noticed that my battery voltage was actually down to 11.8. Um, I was pulling those, you know, however many amps from the battery for at least 10 minutes. So I actually ran the truck for a little while. I got a charge back on it. Um, we're back to 12.2. You can see both the fluke and the inverter are showing 12.2 so that means that the inverter's voltmeter is relatively accurate and we'll see um, how that goes as we continue through our testing. I moved the shop vac into that uh, shed over there by the project house at the moment that's why there is trash everywhere and um, you can see this thing is not happy at all. It's putting out 108 volts and if we look at the 572 watts and it just shut off let's check our battery voltage make sure nothing's actually changed that drastically within 30 seconds or however long it was running so it did drop quite a bit um, let's go turn the truck on and see what happens we'll just skip the part of uh, running this test with the truck off Did not recover. It's got fuses in the side. Guess I could check those, but check the battery connections. All right, may have popped it. 
we've got 12.8 volts while the truck's running, which is low, meaning the battery is definitely drained. Alternator is working pretty hard at this moment. Um, but I checked the fuses, all three of them are still good. I cycled the power switch uh, several times, nothing. So maybe it overheated at 500 and something watts. Uh, we'll give it a couple minutes and check it again. It's been about five minutes. I just turned it on and the inverter does power on now, so it must have overheated. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. The load is still connected, so uh, you'll see this power up and then a few seconds later, it'll try running that back and we'll see what happens, start taking measurements like we wanted to. Oop. I swear guys, it was just on. It was just, I didn't have this plugged in, but it was just on. Okay. Well, even though we don't have all the answers right now, what we do know is this will not put out 750 watts. And if you want, even for 30 something dollars, is I think what I paid for this in the end, if it doesn't, if you can't rely on it, it's not worth it, right? So I'm gonna keep going, but I think we know the the, the opinion here. All right, there has been some news. Um, this terminal was a little loose. I suspect that is pretty crucial when you're talking about passing 75 amps through this. So to be fair, we're gonna try this again. Gave them both a good twist. Um, I know I tested these after I bought it. So I have torqued these. So if they came loose, that is a concern with anyone who has these, but that, that's probably impacting our results here. So let's give this another try. So the load's connected, shop back switch is on, got our connection there, current battery voltage on the truck. Over 13. Oop over 13 so we're recovering um all right let's give it a try okay reading 11.6 remember before we determined that it's pretty accurate but at the battery we got 12.2 now we're down to 11.5 Level four. So our cables, as originally suspected, are an issue here. We're losing voltage in there. So that means that these cables are becoming like heaters, essentially, re resistive loads between your power source and your load that you intend. So these wires are now warming up. I haven't touched them yet, but I can just tell you that if you're losing voltage and you have current flowing, that's happening. So let's see where our source of voltage drop is, or how many we have. So battery look, battery voltage, currently 12.1, which is low, especially for running, but you know, we have a source, which is the alternator, which is constant, at least just to, su to supplement the battery for the time being. Okay, 12.06. Then here at the inverter, 11.6. Okay, so the issue is either the crimp here, which this is real hot. This is real, real hot. Can I pull this back? That is real hot. I'm gonna tell you, I just slid my finger from here, which is warm, it's warm. I wouldn't leave my finger on there but I just slid it down, it's, it's so hot, right here. So, let's see if the other one's the same way. Yep, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That is so hot, you guys. So we've actually really identified the problem here. Um, we've got so much heat loss in the cables, just like I suspected at the beginning, that we're just not running effectively. The, the inverter is only receiving 11 volts and that means it has to draw excessive amounts of current in order to sustain the output that it's required. But that means that you're producing more heat. Like I said, these have become, I can feel them now, hot. 
these have become heaters. There's no way, there's no way that this can sustain 750 watts. Right now it's starting to chirp. We've got 670 watts and, and it's just, it, it can't supply itself enough power at 12 volts. So we saw it overheat producing 500 and something watts, 570 I think it was. And now we see that even with a constant 12 volt supply, which let's just double check here. Just, uh oh, you hear it? This is 12.6, that's what you want. Even at 12.6 volts of incoming current, or uh, you know, incoming power, it cannot support 750 watts. It's just not, this, this is a problem. So buy yourself a different inverter. I highly recommend you get one from a reputable brand that is rated for at least 50% more than what you're intending to run through it. Um, don't buy this one unless you have a very small load and you just got it for a good deal. So lesson learned. Hope it helps. I want to take a second, and obviously it's much later, um, but I did some math here. I want, to, I want to try to show you guys how much energy is actually lost um, pulling from the truck with its source voltage, even though it was compromised from me draining the battery a bit. I want, to, I want to explain to you guys how much energy is really lost and how much of an effect that has on the performance and expectations of the inverter. We've got here, I did the math I did, 670, uh, bug just flew in my face, 670 watts uh, at an 80% inverter efficiency, which may or may not be generous, means that from the battery we were actually pulling 838 watts. 838 watts at the source voltage, what we should have been able to pull, would be 68.7 amps. Let's just remember how small those cables are. 68.7. Because by the time the voltage reached the actual inverter inside of that red plastic box, due to the poor connection across those tiny cables, we actually only had 11.4 volts reaching the inverter. That means that from the battery we had to pull 73.5 amps. The difference there is 4.8 amps. And you're thinking, who cares? We're pulling 75 amps. Like, what, who cares? 4.8 amps. To, to realize how much energy that actually is that's wasted, you multiply that by the 12.2 volts at the source, and we actually wasted 58 and a half watts. Okay, I just want to show you something. This solar-powered floodlight, which is super, super efficient, I would say, for its cost and size, can do this with the big yard and this project house. Ignore all the debris from construction. I mean, look at this thing. That is 8 watts. If this is 8 watts, think about how much energy 58.6 watts actually is. That's tremendous. A small TV is like 50 watts. That That's so inefficient, and because we have that voltage drop, that is driving the requirements of more electrical current, and because you have more electrical current, your physical components are strained considerably more, which dissipates more heat, which causes a catch-22 situation, because now more heat causes even more of a restriction, and you start, that's, that's why it's not a sustainable product. You might look at it and you're like, oh, 670 watts, he pulled that for a minute or so. That's different than expecting that to run continuously, and it couldn't even run it for a short period of time. So I hope this helps explain the criticality of um, really why that, that inefficiency in those cables is really the problem here. And if they had just spent a little bit more money and given you better cables, it probably would hold up to its rated amount. And I'm swinging my phone around trying not to show you guys my license plate or a bunch of trash and stuff, but um, I hope this was well worth the three, three minutes. Oh, also, in addition to just how it changes the performance and, and output capability of the device, it also means you're dissipating 58.6 watts of electrical power directly in the form of heat. That's a tremendous amount. If you touch a resistor between your fingers, you know, the small circular devices, you touch a half a watt resistor while it's trying to dissipate a half a watt, it'll hurt you. It'll burn you. So half of a watt will burn you. 
and that's how much is being dissipated in the source of heat and the in the way of heat before the electricity even reaches the inverter inside the plastic casing. So, anyway.